Welcome to Resurrection Lutheran Church. Uh, we have got a lot of great stuff in this service. You can see we're set up to have the kids sing, it, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. I was telling Pastor Zach on the way over here, I said, I don't think my second wind from the time change has kicked in yet. He's like, just wait till the kids <laughs> sing. I said, you're right. Right, that's going to pump me up. So I'm looking forward to that. A couple announcements before we begin. We've got the Easter extravaganza coming up. That is next week. Uh, next Sunday at 3 p.m., uh, magic shows, games, egg hunt, prizes. If you're, uh, if you're a kid or if you're a kid at heart, you know, come check out that uh, uh, Easter extravaganza. Uh, next up, we have uh, some usher training that we are doing. If you've been looking for a way of how can I serve the church, uh, usher training is something that doesn't take a Ph.D. to do it, but I'm sure we have Ph.D.s doing it. Uh, so it, it is one way that is needed that you can uh, serve the church. Sometimes they say it helps better if we look out and say and do a personal invitation. There's a lot of you here, so take this as my personal invitation to prayerfully consider if you would like to, to uh, look at usher training. Especially with Easter coming up, uh, the, the flow gets a little different uh, for that. We'll be covering that in that training. Uh, so prayerfully consider that. Uh, or talk to one of our ushers and just see what all is involved uh, in that as well. Uh, lastly, we've got a temple talk. Where did Mr. Tim go? Is he around? Here he comes. Tell us about the schools here at Resurrection. Good morning. <laughs> I'm uh, Tyler Tim. I teach uh, middle school at the school, Resurrection Lutheran School. Um, and I, I know there's a lot of Resurrection Lutheran School families in the crowd tonight, or this morning. It feels like night. Um, <laughs> So I just I thought I'd give a quick update. Last weekend, the preschool was featured. Today, the school is in the spotlight because it was Lutheran Schools Week. Uh, we spent the week celebrating uh, with the rest of the southeastern district of the LCMS. We had some dress-up days. We had some fun activities where classes that don't usually interact got together. I know the eighth graders and the four-year-olds did some colorful parachute time. Uh, we've also been doing a postcard exchange where we send letters and postcards to other Lutheran schools across the country, and they send correspondence back. Uh, so it's been a fun time to connect. In fact, that was the theme this week, is connected. Um, the school is in a pilot year to become a North Carolina STEM school of distinction. And STEM is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And as we know, that's becoming increasingly important uh, in our world. Um, so we love the idea of having kids get their biblical instruction and having that modeled for them 
by their teachers and their peers all day, every day, uh, but also we're matching that up with some top-notch academics. The other thing I love about RLS is our staff and our faculty. They are the best. Um, we have some, some great people who are incredibly devoted to the kids, uh, to giving them the best that they can. Uh, we love our students, we pray for our students, um, and we are uh, open, uh, we're enrolling new, new students now uh, in full day four-year-olds all the way up to eighth grade. So if you know of somebody who is looking for a new school home, we are always looking for more families to join our family. Uh, so uh, if, you, if you know of anybody, tell our story, connect them with us, have them come in and shadow. Thank you. And now it's time to stand up as we get ready to go. We begin in a place where we simply receive what God's gifts are to us, his love and forgiveness. We want to share that with all the world. So we start here. Peace of the Lord be with you. Take a minute and share that same message with somebody who's standing close by.
So we begin in the name of our saving God. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We always start with a reminder that it's not about us, it's all about God. So we always begin together with the admission that we are fallen, sinful people. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this year confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. you all to be seated for the Bible readings. Good morning. Today our Old Testament reading comes from Numbers chapter 21 beginning at verse 9 on page 152 in your church Bibles. From Mount Hor they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. 
Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. This is the word of the Lord. This morning, our psalmody comes from Psalm chapter 107, beginning at verse 9, page 599 in your church Bibles. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Some wandered in desert wastes, finding no way to a city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their help, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by the side of the waters, and they were the city of God. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of man. This morning, our epistle lesson comes from Ephesians, excuse me, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, beginning on page 1159 in your church Bibles. And you were dead in the trespasses of sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places of Christ in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Glory to you. Jesus said, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. This is the gospel of the Lord. 
I invite the congregation to be seated and all the kids from those choirs, come on up.
worshipers to come on up for a brief message with Miss Erica Holtz. Don't go far, come back. <laughs> Good morning. So good to see you all. That sounded amazing. If you sang, come on over. There's so many friends this morning. It's so good to see you. Thanks for coming. Hi. <laughs> is this for you? This is a what? Present. And I think that there must be a gift inside of this present. Do you like presents? Yes. And gifts? Okay, let me ask you something. If I asked you to pay me $10, would it still be a gift? No, no it wouldn't be a gift. It would be something you buy or purchase, right? What if I told you you needed to do something for it? Would it be a gift? No, no still not a gift, right? A gift is something that you just have to accept. You don't have to pay for it. It doesn't cost anything, and you don't have to do anything for it. You just have to accept it. Um, we can all probably think of some good gifts, right, that we would like. Maybe you've gotten a good gift for Christmas or your birthday. Gus is going after my gift. He must really like gifts. <laughs> um, but I want to talk to you today about the best gift. Ooh, I know. I have a lot of guesses. It is eternal life. Have you heard that word before, that phrase, eternal life? It is the greatest gift of all. Earlier I heard Pastor read a verse from the Bible that you might have heard before. We, we're going to hear it a couple times. Today. You heard it before? John 3.16. Okay, repeat it after me. Are you ready? For God so loved the world. Oh, you're saying it with me. You're not even repeating after me. Okay, let's do it all together then. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Amazing. That was so awesome. Who is the whoever in that verse? Us. Yes, you and me and everyone out there. It's never polite to ask somebody how much a gift cost is it? No, but in the Bible, it tells us how much the gift of eternal life cost. It cost Jesus, God's son. So we know how much he loves us because he gave us the ultimate gift, his son. Jesus died on the cross to forgive our sins so that we can have eternal life with him. Will you do a repeat after me prayer? Yes. Awesome. Dear God, Dear God thank, you thank you for the greatest gift of all. Thank you for Jesus who loved us so much. That he paid the price paid the for, our sin, for our sin, so we can have eternal life. So have eternal life. Amen. Thank you. And we have children's church. And you can come with me.
Savior, I come, quiet my soul. Remember, redemption's hill where your blood was spilled for my ransom. Everything I once held dear. cross is where we are heading in our message today. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My <laughs> wife would probably tell you that I have been known to complain at times. I know, that's hard to believe. Actually, she, she probably wouldn't tell you. But if she did, I would say that she is correct. I think that complaining is something that comes easily for us. And it was probably some of the first words that were spoken after the fall when Adam and Eve were removed from the garden. We love and we support the people around us. But for me, at least, if something isn't going the way that I think it should, my first thought, usually unspoken, is a complaint. You've if you've ever been on the receiving end of a complaint, you may recognize the feeling that I'm going to describe as simply saying, are you kidding me right now? That feeling of disbelief when you're actually witnessing what is being said or done. I remember coming back from a 15-month deployment one time. Faith and I were sitting down and we were watching a reality TV show. I, I can't even remember which one it was now. But the person had been away from their family about three weeks. 
and they were starting to complain at how hard it was being away from their loved ones that long. Faith and I just looked at each other. No words were necessary. But that, are you kidding me right now? Response was beginning to settle in. I sent my son a meme recently, just a couple days ago, that said, technically speaking, there is a lot of food in this house. However, none of it is sweet and none of it is microwavable. Therefore, there is no food in this house. Why did I send this to him? Well, there have been times when I have literally finished unpacking groceries from the store, and he comes down the stairs, opens the refrigerator, and says, we don't have anything to eat. My immediate thought, are you kidding me right now? Of course, I have found myself on the receiving end of that question. When I do or say something, and my wife will just stop in her tracks, and she'll get that look on her face that needs no explanation at this point in our marriage, and I can tell she is thinking, are you serious? That's the picture I get when I read through, reread through the Old Testament reading for today. God about to come out with his own version of, are you kidding me right now? Taken on its own, without any additional context, it seems like the nation of Israel is simply bringing up how long it's taking to get from Egypt to the promised land. After all, their trip will take 40 years, and it should have only taken probably a couple months at tops. They are impatient. They grumble about the food. They complain to Moses, saying that he has led them out into the wilderness to die. But it's not the first time that they have complained. Pastor Zach's sermon last week talked about how God was constantly reminding them I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of slavery. They have to be constantly reminded because they are always looking inward to their current circumstances. Not where they've come from, not for, for who has been providing for them all this time, not the fact that God himself is leading him in a pillar of smoke during the day and a pillar of fire at night, not the fact of the logistical nightmare of feeding millions of people and livestock daily with food and water in the desert, all done by God himself. They look at how they feel about what's happening, and they seem to constantly dismiss what God has done, choosing rather to complain about their current circumstances. We know that nothing comes as a surprise to God, and so we know that he didn't react by saying, are you kidding me right now? But he does react with a test of their faith. He sends fiery serpents that bite the people, causing many to die. When I see Faith stop dead in her tracks with that look on her face, I know I've messed up. And I don't think it's long before the people of Israel knew that they had messed up. They confessed to Moses, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he will take away the serpents from us. And Moses does. He prays on behalf of the people, asking God for his forgiveness, praying for God's mercy on the people so that they may be healed, so that they may live. They've taken that important step of confession. Sometimes, however, confession is still focused inward. It's more along the lines of, I see you're upset. If you forgive me, I promise that I'll change. I will do better next time. That kind of confession doesn't work, even with something simple. Like how Faith got frustrated with me one time when she kept finding kitchen cabinets over. And I'm hearing from lots of people now after church that the, I'm not alone in this story. I insisted that it wasn't me, but for the sake of the argument, I told her I was sorry, and I would ensure that they were closed. What I meant was, if you let this go, I will look for whoever is keeping the cabinets open, and while secretly hoping it was her. And then she went away for a couple weeks, and both of the kids were gone at the same time, and I saw some kitchen cabinets open. It was me. 
and I sent a picture of the open cabinets with my second confession, this one a little bit more sincere. And I have noticed that the cabinets are closed more often now. But approaching God in that same way and saying, I've learned my lesson. I won't do that again. I promise to do better. Just please do this one thing for me now. That is not the level of faith and trust that God desires from us. That approach uses God as the healer, but us as the changer. And he knows that on our own, we won't change. We must approach God with contrite hearts, as sinners, because that is who we are. We are incapable of doing good works that lead to righteousness. And so we require a God that will freely give his gift of grace and mercy. And that is the God that we have today. That is the God that we have tomorrow. That is the same God in Moses' day. God does not change. But he requires that we believe on faith what he has done to save us. And this is where our readings from last week and this week tie in so nicely together. Last week we read as Paul quoted the prophet Isaiah, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. And this week's epistle, we hear again Paul writing, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of your own doing. It is a gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For the nation of Israel, God instructed Moses to make a serpent and set it on a pole, lift it up high so that anyone who looks on it would live. Imagine being one of those people back in that day. You and your family are dying of snake bites. And Moses stands up. He lifts up a bronze or a copper serpent on a pole, and he says, look upon the serpent and you shall live. That just might be an, are you serious with me right now, moment. I'm dying, and you tell me to look up at some man-made figure lifted on this pole. No medication, nothing to put on the snake bite. Your antidote, your antidote to do something that is actively killing us is to just look at this serpent. How is that going to save us? There is no logical reason that this will work. I can imagine, too, Moses looking back in his own frustration, saying, you're right, it doesn't make any sense, but it is what God instructed us to do, and it is by faith alone that we are going to do it. Those who stepped out on faith and looked up at the serpent were saved. It is the foolishness of God that is wiser than the wisdom of men, and it is the grace of God through faith that saved those who looked up at the serpent. Jesus very clearly is telling Nicodemus the same thing in our gospel reading today. He says, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. How is Jesus, the Son of Man, lifted up? Our first response is to probably say, the cross. And while that is correct, it is not complete. Jesus is lifted up on the cross, but he is lifted up to become the very nature of sin. He is lifted up to take on the sins of the entire world, your sins and mine. He is lifted up to his death. But that is not the end of the story. Jesus is also lifted up in his resurrection. His rising from the grave defeats death and provides us with eternal life. Christ freed us from the slavery of sin. He freed us from the sting of death. He is the source of life because he was lifted up. And our looking upon him in faith, lifted up at, on his death, resurrection, and ascension, is what brings eternal life. But this will be a stumbling block 
for many in the world today. This is where we are going to hear some people cry out, Are you serious with me right now? What you are telling me is that for me to receive eternal life, all I have to do is look at Jesus and believe that he died for my sins and was raised up to life from the grave. That doesn't make any sense. I am a good person. I give to charities. I treat people with respect. I don't commit any crimes. I lead a good life. It is nonsense to say eternal life comes from Christ alone. You don't, don't you think that it is, that is rather narrow-minded and hateful towards other religions? All religions worship God, and so all religions have a path to eternal life. It makes no sense to say that there is just one way. That was a rather long narrative, I admit. But I am sure that you've heard some people say at least some of that, if not all of that argument. Their faith is in their way to eternal life, not God's way. It makes no sense to look up at the crucified and risen Lord for eternal life, and so they don't. And their fate will be the same as the Israelites who looked up at Moses at the same time and said, are you kidding me right now? With that attitude, and they died in their snake-bitten lack of faith. But to those who looked at Moses' serpent, to those who look upon Christ in faith to save them, they will receive the gift of life. Freely given grace and mercy for the forgiveness of sins because of Christ lifted up. Jesus confirms this again in John chapter 6, verse 40. Talking to the crowd, he says, For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. God's will is that everyone should be saved, for everyone to have the gift of faith and believe that Christ is Lord and Savior. We are all sinners, every single one of us. We start from that deficit, and we can never be good enough to claw our way out of that hole. It is only by God's grace that we are saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. What a strange concept that must have been for first century people who heard that for the first time. For thousands of years, the scriptures all talked about the Jews being God's people. But now Jesus is telling us that not only does God love the Jews, he loves the entire world. He loves both Jew and Gentile. He loves you. He loves me. He loves Muslim. He loves atheist. He loves Republican. He loves Democrat. God so loved the world. And his love for us led him to action. The giving of his only son to do what we cannot, to live a righteous and sinless life. And in doing so, Jesus becomes the perfect sacrifice to pay the price for all of our sins, taking our sins to the cross and rising to life so that those who look up at the risen Lord and believe, will have eternal life. Is there any other way to eternal life? I don't think God could be any clearer than verse 18. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. There is no neutral ground here. If someone does not believe on faith and to look up on Jesus Christ, crucified, died, and risen again for their sins, they, can, they stand condemned already. Faith that looks to Christ for salvation is all that is needed. Nothing else. God's grace alone, by faith alone, because of Christ alone. We are still sinners but we are forgiven sinners. We are righteous in God's eyes 
because Christ's righteousness covers us. And we are now sent out into the world to share that good news message with those who need to hear that God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you so loved us and knew that we needed a Savior, and so your love was put into action, sending Jesus Christ to the earth as a man. Lord Jesus, thank you for your life, your death, resurrection, and ascension that saves us. Holy Spirit, keep us focused on looking up to the risen Lord. By faith we live, and by your love and grace we live eternally. Amen. And now let us reaffirm our belief using the words of the Nicene Creed. Please stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, being one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. He was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sin, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I ask you to remain standing as we join our hearts together for the prayers of the church. Let's pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious God, whose steadfast love endures forever. We lift up our voices in thanksgiving to you today. You have redeemed us out of trouble and gathered us here to feed us with your word of life, that our souls may not faint within us. Satisfy the longing of our hearts today with your son's good things, especially the gift of faith in his saving work and his very own body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins, that we may always abide in your eternal peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you so love the world that you sent your one and only Son, Jesus, to rescue it. Our hearts go out today to the victims of terror and violence worldwide, especially those finding themselves in harm's way in the midst of war and political upheaval. Today we pray not only for the people of Ukraine, Gaza, and Israel, we also remember the people of Haiti in light of recent events there. Uphold all who work on behalf of a just and lasting peace in these places and through negotiations and communications at the highest levels and give courage to those in positions of political power best able to bring about positive and lasting changes. Lord, in your mercy. Oh God, you are our light and our salvation. Hide in your shelter today those who are on our hearts, baby Aiden, Eric, Mara, Carrie, Paige, Connie, Mark, Doug, Zachary, and Marty. We ask that you would be with all who suffer in body, mind, and, and soul. Keep them in their day of trouble and restore all who are sick according to your wisdom, upholding all for whom we pray with your peace in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. And God of all comfort, in Jesus' earthly life, he experienced the death of those he loved. Bring your comfort now to all those who are suffering the same loss of beloved family and friends. Especially today, we remember the family of uh, Arlo Sunderman, the uh, father of Cindy Vogel. 
point all of them to the hope of eternal life with you, Lord, in your mercy. And gracious Lord, you've made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our trespasses and sins. Cause your spirit to be at work in us that we may not carry out simply the inclinations of our bodies and minds, but be your workmanship in Christ Jesus, walking in the good works that he's prepared in advance for us to do. Lord, in your mercy. And today we add again a special prayer of blessing to all of our schools here, to Resurrection Lutheran Preschool, Resurrection Lutheran School, Resurrection Lutheran Music School. Heavenly Father, be with our teachers and our families and our kids, all who you entrust to our care to bring the message and the example of your love to them in Christ as we partner together to be uh, your teachers both here and at home, we ask that you would give us your wisdom, train up and encourage our kids in their own walks of faith that they may know you and continue to celebrate the gift of life that you have given to them, Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This bread, drink this cup, come to him and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup, trust in him and you will not thirst. This is his body given for you. Blue. 
Now, as you look to Christ, Christ of the cross, Christ of the empty tomb, Christ who was ascended into heaven, his benediction goes with you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord, look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
worship has ended. Go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, we come, we gather together.